Welcome to Land a House. I'm Seth. The hill behind my house is a big mess. I've tried to plant grass up here a couple times and it just will not grow. So what I'm going to do next summer is put a terrace system back here so I can grow some plants and have a much better yard that doesn't wash down and head off to the creek. So uh, in order to water that terrace system, I'm going to be installing this poly pipe from my storage water tank to right up here. And that will allow me to get water to irrigate whenever I uh, need to. So anyway, today we're going to be installing this pipe with a little cutoff valve right up here above this back hill. Let's get to it. I've swapped you over to the GoPro because it's raining now. All right, I've got this three quarter inch poly pipe. I need to unravel and then drag up the hill. There's no sun today, so hopefully it will still uncoil even though it's cold. I have this cutoff valve that I'm going to use to cap the end of my pipe. Uh, but before I do that here, what I want to do is drag this other end up to the tank just to make sure that I uh, don't have an excessive amount of pipe down on the hill. So I'm thinking about stopping it just right up here somewhere. And I guess uh, in the future, the extra pipe can be used to skirt around over here and do more irrigation on the farther side. But anyway, let's drag the pipe through the woods real quick. Let me see about doing a straight shot right up here. I think that will be the best thing. So let's find, yeah, the tank is right through that gap. So let's begin walking that way. And hopefully I won't find any uh, snakes or any uh, ground wasp as we go along this journey. This is what my water tower looks like. So water goes up this pipe right here, spills into the top of the tank. And then on the bottom of the tank here, you've got the output that goes downhill and also a stand pipe, which is the overflow goes right over here. So if I pick up this pipe here, you can see it's got overflow coming out right here. The end of the pipe is right here, about 15 feet too far up the hill than I would like. So I think what I'm going to do is drag the other end a little bit further down and hook it up. Instead of being right at the tank, I'll hook it up into the previous line down the hill a little bit. So I'll show you what I mean right up here. And I can drag this back down a little bit. Instead of taking the poly pipe up the hill and attaching to the tank, which is right there, I've simply just skirted over here where I can connect to this pipe right here, which is the same delivery or the same pipe coming down the hill. And so it'll just sneak back down this way and it'll give us the same amount of pressure because it still has the same amount of water coming into the pipe from down here. So let's go ahead and step back down here and put this on the end so that we can close that off before we open up this side over here. I only gained a couple of feet by doing that, but I think it's going to work out well in the end. So here's the end of my poly pipe. I brought a couple of hose clamps to put on here. The pressure won't be too crazy, but I think it'll be enough that it's worth having that hose clamp. That's probably good enough for now. If not, I'll come back whenever it's sunny out and get this thing pushed in here a little further. I'm going to turn the tank water off for a moment so I can get this thing fixed. There we go. Uh, this thing may start overflowing in a moment, but uh, we'll at least be able to get to this to open up this pipe down here. I'm simply going to install this T-fitting into the line. So I'm going to lose a little bit of water here whenever I cut into this, but with that valve turned off, it shouldn't be too bad. Let's go ahead and put this right about here. Go down below. Make sure I got the right one.
I'm gonna let that water drain out of there for a bit before we get this connector installed. Okay, go ahead and get this thing separated. There we go. Always remember to put that hose clamp on first. I have done that so many times where I forget to do that and just have to take things apart. And the last connector here goes off this way. Okay, and that's what that looks like. I think it's gonna do quite well. Let's go ahead and turn the water on and see what the flow is down here. have a little leak right here. I'm gonna have to tighten those up a bit. The pipe travels through the woods and comes to right about here. Now I would have liked this to have been another, I don't know, 10 feet or so closer, but it is what it is. So it's got an airlock in it at the moment. As soon as I open this up, we should start seeing some flow. There we go. Let's wait just a moment here. I like it. I'm not entirely certain what type of irrigation system I'm gonna have out here, whether it's gonna be a traditional sprinkler like the wobbler, or if I'm gonna have drip lines out here, but this hopefully will be able to run whichever I decide to go with. Now there's one more thing I wanna tackle in this video. Someone commented and said, do I ever have problems with rodents like chipmunks or squirrels chewing on my poly pipes here in the woods? Let me show you the issue I have going on. My local hardware store did not have rolls of three quarter inch poly pipe. And so I purchased a roll of the half inch and I kind of stepped down from three quarter to half inch on my delivery pipe going up the hill, as you can see right here. Over here coming down the hill is three quarter inch. So I've got a leak right here and it's because of either a squirrel or a chipmunk has chewed right there. And so it's just kind of sending water off in about a 10 foot distance over there. I've never had an issue with a squirrel chewing into the three quarter inch. It's always been the half inch. I wonder if it's just thinner or uh, if they can hear the water, smell the water. I have no idea, but uh, here we go. There's a hole. So what I'm going to do is fix it like we did before with one of these. Just put that right in there and then use some hose clamps to keep it together. If it happens again, I will swap this over to three quarter and hopefully eliminate that issue. There is no cutoff valve here, so the ram pump's gonna keep pushing water up. We'll have to uh, just get a little bit wet while working on this. So let me see if I can cut this a bit more and get the top water out at least. Oh. Yeah, definitely got wet on that one. All right, there we go. Bit of a mess, but we got it. All right, probably gonna get splashed on this one too. Oops, ha, <laughs> like I always do. I forgot to put that hose clamp on here. Get wet again, yeah. A leak of that size will greatly reduce the amount of water that reaches up to your tank, so you definitely want to fix that kind of leak. So it's only happened a couple times, but I've had the half inch poly pipe chewed into by some kind of rodent. The three quarter inch doesn't seem to quite have that problem. Anyway, uh, that's all I've got for you today. I have brought the poly pipe through the woods to right over here, and so I can then uh, go off and around the solar panel for over there in the future, and then this one right here will be over in this area. I'm just kind of preparing for whenever I get a terracing system back here because you can see 
uh, these plants right up here, it has eroded about five inches of depth on this whole entire hill. And uh, you can see my little trench to kind of carry the water off and keep the silt out. Um, but I want to hopefully stop all that from happening. And so my terracing system will um, be put all along this hill and it'll have rocks and dirt and plants inside of there to keep it from eroding down the hill. Hope you enjoyed this video. I'm Seth with Land of House and I will see you in the next one. Bye.